So now that we've uh, laid out all the assumptions of the two market model and introduced our labor demand, labor supply curve, aggregate demand, aggregate supply curve, um, we can um, define the solution of our two market model and um, look at its structure so that then you know so that then we can actually solve it. Um, so you know, solving the two market model, what that means is just um, finding the value of all our variables that um, satisfy all the um, assumptions that we've introduced. So what, what are the variables uh, that would be interested in here? Um, So if we starting from the product market, so we'll be interested in, of course, output. Oops. Y will be interested in consumption. C will be interested in the product market tightness. X will be interested in um, the price of um, services that are um, traded on the product market, of course. Um, we'll be interested in the capacity K uh, of the economy, which is the amount of services that could be sold if um, there were enough customers. Um, so that's a first batch of variables. So here we have um, five of them. Then looking at the labor market, we'd be interested in employment. The, you know, the number of workers who actually have a job would be interested in the number of producers. Um, so these are the number of workers who actually enter the production function. We'll be interested in the labor market tightness. We'll be interested in the wage. Um, labor force participation here is exogenous. Uh, so there is nothing, uh, nothing really here. Um, and then, you know, <clears throat> In addition, of course, so these are, uh, so here we have a total of uh, we have a total of nine, nine variables. So what that means is that we'll need nine independent conditions to be able to solve uh, our model. And you know, formally, uh, because it's a static model, we uh, we have nine variables. We are looking for nice nine. We need nine conditions, nine equations. So we could represent our model as a nine by nine uh, system with nine variables and nine equations. But of course, you know we'll see that the, the structure of the model is such that actually it'll be much easier to solve the model than solving a nine by nine system because a lot of uh, a lot of equations are just you know are going to tell us the value of other variables once, basically once we figure out the value of a small core of variables, once we have those, we can figure out everything just through, uh, you know, explicit expressions that uh, link variables that we already know to variables that we don't know yet. Um, so actually it's going to be simpler than solving a nine by nine system. Um, something I should just say on the side, so um, these are our nine, uh, variable, but once we have these variables, they are like extra uh, information, uh, extra knowledge that we can get out of our model. So, for instance, <clears throat> once we have this, we can also get. Uh, so this is just to preview that there is even you know we'll know even more things than just what's in there through additional work that we've already done. Uh, so once we know this variable, like there are extra stuff that we'll be able to figure out. For instance, we'll know also what is the rate of idleness uh, in firms, which is just 1 minus f of x. So of course, um, once you have x, you can compute that. We'll know what is the rate of unemployment. And which is just 1. Uh, minus f hat of theta. So f of theta is a probability to find a job. So 1 minus f hat of theta 
f hat of the test the probability to find a job. One minus f hat of the test the probability you don't find a job. If you don't find a job, you remain unemployed in this model. Uh, so we'll also know like all the trading probabilities. So that's like f of x, the selling probability, q of x, the buying probability, f hat of theta, the job finding probability, q hat of theta, the recruiting probabilities, we'll know the two matching wedges, tau x, the matching wedge on the product market, which is a gap between output and consumption, tau hat of theta, the matching wedge on the labor market, which is a gap between the number of producers and uh, the total number of employees. So, you know, there's even more than we know, and we could have, you know, we could have said like, oh, tau is a variable, and so that would have made, say, 10 variables, and then we would have said, oh, yes, tau is given by the expression for tau of x, you know, so we could, there are many ways to, many ways to represent the model, so we could have said it's a 10 by 10 model if I had added tau as a variable and the expression for tau of x, tau of x, and an equation. I could have done 11 by 11 if I had also added tau hat as a variable and then given given by the expression for tau hat of theta. Then I could have added like f as an extra variable and say, oh yeah, f is given by the expression for f of x. I could have added q, q is given by the expression for q of x. f hat, q hat, you know, one minus f of x, one minus f hat of theta and so on. So, you know, the, you can always like your model, there are many equivalent way to represent it. Um, so, but here, because f, q, f hat, q hat, tau, tau hat, we have explicit expression for them as a function of tightness. You know, I'm not I'm not going to in, to uh, introduce them in our system uh, for the solution of the model. Uh, just to simplify things. So anyway, for now, what we've isolated is a nine variable, nine equation. Um, but we can streamline a bunch of things. Uh, So we can simplify the model from the nine by nine uh, description above. So basically, you always want to simplify and streamline your model as much as possible. And to do that, you substitute out variables that you can express uh, explicitly as function of other variables. You know, and then when you do that, you can just substitute out, substitute out, substitute out to reduce the dimensionality of your model, which makes it easier to solve it. So, for instance, C, which is consumption, we know that it's output divided by one plus tau of x. And um, so, you know, if I know y output mark, product market tightness x, I know C. So we can eliminate C uh, for our system here. So we are not interested here. We can eliminate uh, C because if I know Y and I know X, I know C through this condition. So now I'm down to eight by eight. I'm looking for an eight by eight system once I have this. So similarly, uh, N, the number of producer, it's L, the number of employees divided by one plus tau hat of theta. So I don't need to keep track of L and N separately, so I can get rid of N here. So now I'm down to a seven by seven system. Um, K, which I have above as capacity, we know that it's given by the production function, is A times N alpha. Uh, and L I just you know, so if I want, it's A times L divided by one plus tau hat of theta. alpha. So once I have L, once I have theta, I also have K. So here, you know, I can eliminate K that I have here. So now I'm done by a six by six system. But then, you know, through the price norms, actually, um, we said that our price P of services is given by a price norm that depends on the two tightnesses. Or wedge, nominal wedge uh, W, we know that it's given by a wedge norm that depends on the two tightnesses. Um, so these two things, once I have a tightness, is I'll have my price and my wedge. And in fact, here, we are focusing on a fixed price, fixed wedge. Uh, to 
So with a fixed price, fixed wage assumption, these are just parameters. The P and W are parameters. So here, you know, I don't even need to uh, keep track of this. So now you can see that I'm down to a four by four system. Our model boils down to four by four system. So that means a system with four variables, four equations. So the four variables that we have that are key, it's output, employment, product market tightness, labor market tightness. What are the four equations, therefore, that we'll have? Well, of course, the four equations are going to be given by uh, the uh, curve that we've been studying. So, for instance, so we know that L employ oops. employment L, we know that it has to be on the labor supply. Uh, because it has to respect the matching process and so on. And so this is just F hat of theta times H. So that's uh, one. So firms have to uh, choose employment to maximize profit. So this means that um, employment has to uh, satisfy the labor demand curve, um, which is um, the result of profit maximization by firm. And that we have an expression also for this labor demand curve. So we have... Uh, Employment has to be given by f of x, that's our selling probability, a alpha that captures the marginal product of labor. This is divided by the real wage, w over p. This is 1 over 1 minus alpha. Alpha is a parameter from the production function. And then we have a second factor that depends on um, the cost of recruiting. So we have 1 plus tau hat of theta. That's alpha over 1 minus alpha. Okay, so here we have um, first equation, second equation. So then uh, we have a third equation that says that output has to be on the aggregate supply curve, which captures uh, both capacity and matching on the uh, product market. So y has to be equal to ys of x. And we know that the aggregate um, supply curve will also involve, we know that it's a bridge between product and labor market, so it also involves labor market tightness and employment. Um, and so that's f of x times uh, basically what's produced by firm, which is a, l, alpha, and that's divided by 1 plus tau hat theta to the power of alpha. So here we have A third relationship between output, employment, and uh, the two tightnesses. And then the fourth equation, of course, is that output has also must be on the aggregate demand. Um, and that's because, uh, you know, output has to be consistent with uh, the fact that households maximize their utility subject to their budget constraint. Uh, and so output has to satisfy that uh, it just says that basically households, they'll take the tightness as given, prices as given, they'll um, then decide the number of visits that they do to shops um, to make sure that they can uh, that they can maximize their utility. So that's given by YD. And this we said was equal to um, sigma x, the marginal propensity to spend, which is a function of tightness, times, uh, so we have mu over p, which is real wealth plus uh, real income, and this we said was f of x times k, uh, k is the capacity. And 
And so, of course, this involves k, which is a new variable, but we can uh, get rid of it because uh, so that's sigma x times f of x, because k we know that is just a l alpha 1 plus tau hat alpha plus mu over p. So this is our first relation, uh, our first relationship between output, employment, and the two tightnesses. Um, So this is one, two, three, and um, four here. So we have a system, we have four equations, we have four unknowns. Um, and so now the question is just to try to figure out how to solve it, make sure the solution always exists, that it's well unique. And then after that, you know, once we have that, then we'll be able to um, study the response of the model to various shocks through comparative statics.